Hi guys, Korean Movie Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap a 2013 Korean drama history movie, called The Face Reader. This movie is about a man who can read a person's personality just by looking at their faces. However, he gets entangled in the kingdom's power struggle and has to face many hardships. So, how can his talent help him? Will he survive in the end? Let's find out. In one cold night, a king's advisor is scared to death that he is going to be beheaded, as it was prophesied so by a face reader. He claims that this greatest face reader in Chorsorn can predict your personality, most compatible working area, your past and future, and even alter it by making changes on your face. Many years ago, the face reader, Nekyung, lives in seclusion, as his father used to be a traitor which makes his name hated throughout the country. One day, a man and a woman approach him in a hut. He lives with his brother-in-law who is also his assistant, and his only son. His son doesn't like him to be a face reader, so they have to keep it from him. On the other hand, son is a smart boy who wants to be a public official and defends the people. However, Nekyung doesn't let him as their track record is too bad and he will only be punished for it. Finally, Nekyung meets the mysterious man and woman who pose as business partners. Just by a look on their face, he knows that they are lying about their profession. Hearing this, the two eventually expose their identity. Madam flirts with Nekyung and introduces herself as the owner of a well-known courtesan house. She comes with her secretary to hire Nekyung to be a face reader in her house. That night, they feast upon the face reading money and Sun immediately knows it, resulting in an argument. Nekyung plans to accept Madam's job secretly and asks his assistant to cooperate. However, they wake up late and Sun has gone off on his own to be an official. Seeing his determination, Nekyung reluctantly lets him go to chase his dream. Meanwhile, Nekyung and his assistant arrive in the courtesan house. Madam immediately welcomes them with a big feast and lots of girls. That night, they get really drunk and blindly enter a disadvantageous contract with Madam. The next morning, they are immediately worked to the bone at a low wage can't stand the treatment, they secretly enter a mysterious room in hope to meet important clients. Turns out, it's a room where Madam inspects the girl's private parts. Suddenly, the secretary comes in to inform her of an important guest's arrival. The guest is a supporter of Kim, a high-ranking official who actively supports the king's rule and fights the notorious traitor, Prince Suyang. The guest comes to ask for a face reading to capture a murderer. Nekyung immediately sees this as a chance and accepts the task. Nekyung inspects the suspects, but cannot find a murderer among them. However, he successfully captures the murderer who is also the victim's husband, as their personality don't match in their marriage. Unbeknownst to them, the murderer is one of Suyang's men and they capture him. Suyang's schemer sees him as a threat and orders them to kill him. Fortunately, they manage to jump into the well, and Kim's men arrive to save them. The next morning, Kim personally invites them to talk. Nekyung is immediately amazed by Kim's face, which resembles a tiger. Due to his amazement, Nekyung accepts a job from Kim to help him hire trustworthy officials into the government. He trains the inspectors to read the faces, and even advises them on the best candidate for various jobs. In addition, he manages to capture a rotten official who has been corrupting the government's inventory. Nekyung's popularity is boosted even further due to the event, and people line up to get their fate changed. Meanwhile, Nekyung's popularity reaches the palace and the king wants to see him. At first, King doesn't like his talent of reading people through faces, as it's the same as determining someone's future from their physical traits. However deep inside, King is concerned about the traitors among the government officials. So, he unofficially visits Nekyung and gives him a mission to root out the potential traitors in the country. Starting that day, Nekyung studies the faces of important politicians who have betrayed their country. Then, he visits every suspect one by one, reads through them, and reports it directly to King. Finally, the last suspect is Prince Suyang. Under the tense atmosphere, he eventually meets Suyang. However, he makes strange twitchings and Nekyung rules him out of the traitors list. Hearing this, King reveals that he is gravely ill and appoints Nekyung as his son's advisor, should he die. Then, Nekyung comes back to assess the new officials who have passed the tests. He is surprised to see his son, under another name, passed with the highest score. 
they decide to keep their relationship hidden so Sun can climb up the rank. Then, he gets home and receives a letter from King. Turns out, King has died and officially entrusts his son, the new king, to Nekyung and Kim. Then, Kim invites Nekyung to meet Suyang officially. Nekyung is surprised to see that Suyang is a whole different person from what he has seen and gives out a very intimidating aura. He is very ambitious and has a wolf-like face, traits that really describe a traitor. Nekyung finds himself fooled by Suyang's men, who posed to be Suyang during his unofficial visit before. Suyang recognizes Nekyung and invites him to his party later. When Nekyung is on his way home, the schemer reveals himself again and abducts him. He threatens him to tell the new king that Kim is the traitor. Schema even promises to restore their family name, should Suyang become the king. Nekyung continuously thinks of the offer, as it will save his son's career. Meanwhile, Suyang has gathered an army from outside the kingdom, and sends a declaration of war to Kim. The next day, Suyang holds a party for all face readers and fortune tellers. One by one, they come up front to speak of Suyang's greatness and his bright future as a king. However, the atmosphere changes when he catches one of the face readers lying to please him, so he immediately executes her. Next, he asks Nekyung to read his face, but Nekyung still can't decide who to support and stay silent. Then, he spends some time with his son. Seeing how righteous his son is, he decides to support the legitimate king and Kim. And so, the fight between the two opposing parties starts. Kim and Nekyung who want to root out Suyang and support the new king, versus Suyang and Schema who want to kill the new king and plant a fake king to take over the throne. Finally, Kim and Nekyung come clean to King and tell him about Suyang. However, King defends Suyang as he is his beloved uncle. That night, King spends some time with Suyang. Suyang intends to kill him with a poison needle. Luckily, King sees his shadow and his plan fails. Suddenly, the guards chain shifts and Kim's men take over the security. The shift is unwelcomed by Suyang and he lashes out, which makes him suspicious. King starts to believe Nekyung and studies face reading. Meanwhile, Nekyung finds that Su Yang's men have flooded the palace and discovers the poison needle. They plan to capture Schema as he is the mastermind behind the coup tactics. However, Nekyung hasn't seen his face and only remembers his voice. Kim entrusts Nekyung with some of his men to help the search. Nekyung successfully identifies Schema, but cannot find him in Su Yang's place. He feels hopeless as all of his efforts have been for nothing. Fortunately, Nekyung hears from Kim that King is studying face reading. He plans to add a trait on Suyang's face, one that indicates a traitor. So, he invites Madam as his partner. The next day, Nekyung and Madam disguise themselves as doctors to tend to Suyang who got sick. They anesthetize Suyang, carefully draw three moles on Suyang's face, and quickly get away before he wakes up. Meanwhile, Nekyung's son has become an official and remembers a corrupt official's face. The official joins the rank with a yellow tag, a recommendation from Kim. Sun reports the tagging problem to King himself and King discusses it with Su Yang. Suddenly, King notices Su Yang's new moles and remembers a well-known traitor's face from his study. He finally remembers Kim's and Nekyung's warnings. In addition, he realizes that he has been surrounded by Su Yang's men all this time. Finally, King officially orders Kim to exile Su Yang from his kingdom. Kim plans to capture Su Yang when his men are out to escort the Chinese. On the other hand, Nekyung is looking for medicine for his son in the mountains. At the palace, Kim is informed that Nekyung's son has advised the king to stop his recommendation tagging program. Kim is furious and secretly sends his men to blind Nekyung's son's eyes. That night, assistant rushes to his nephew who is already half-blind. He hears that this is Kim's doing, so he comes to Su Yang who is giving a reception to the Chinese. Under the rainy night, assistant reveals the king's and Kim's plan to exile him and warns him about it. Su Yang thanks him and promises to restore their family name, should he be the next king. Unfortunately, all of the incidents are going according to Schema's plan. He knew about Nekyung and his son's relationship, so he planted a corrupt official under Kim's recommendation program and hurted son under Kim's name. Nekyung gets back from the mountains and hears all of it from assistant. However, he knows that Kim is not a traitor, so he rushes to aid him. Suddenly, Su Yang and his men come to kill Kim. 
Nick Yoon saves Kim from the surprise attack. However, Kim is greatly outnumbered. Eventually, Kim is stabbed several times and furiously fights for his life, before finally being knocked out and dies. Nick Yoon tries to warn the palace, but Schema reveals his face and stops him. Then, Su Yang and his men storm the palace to kill the king's supporters. Su Yang officially announces himself as the new king, and makes enemies of the previous king's men. Lots of just men and women are killed on that bloody night. The previous king cries as his father's legacy is destroyed just after he is in charge. The next day, Nick Yoon finds his son on his way to execution for defying the new king. He begs Su Yang to spare him. Once more, Su Yang asks whether he is fit to be a king, and Nick Yoon answers that he will be a king. Su Yang likes the answer and spares them. However, he turns back and executes Nick Yoon's son, as he is already a king and doesn't need Nick Yoon's prophecy. The incident gravely saddens Nick Yoon and his assistant, for they have failed to keep their family safe. Months later, Madam leads Schema to Nick Yoon's seclusion. Schema wants to recruit Nick Yoon to join Su Yang's rank. However, Nick Yoon firmly rejects the offer and reads Schema's face instead. He prophesied that Schema will be beheaded. Fast forward to the present, the prophecy has greatly frightened the Schema, so he hasn't made any enemies since then. In addition, Su Yang had atoned for his sins, before finally dying days later. In the end, Schema finally dies due to old age. However, he is beheaded posthumously due to an old case. Turns out, Nick Yoon knew that Su Yang wouldn't live long and that the Schema was the one who would stir chaos in the kingdom, so he told him that he was going to be beheaded to tame him. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel out. Thank you for watching, and see you, next time.